Hello gorgeous, this is Shannon from the Pretty Department and this is the 2022 and beyond updated video about resumes. Makeup resumes is one of the things that people ask me about all the time. Once you figure out that you wanna be a makeup artist and once you start working a little bit, you're like, oh my God, I probably should put a resume together. So I'm gonna go through my personal resume. Now your resume doesn't need to look like my resume. I've been doing this a very long time, but you need to start somewhere. Here is what my resume looks like, okay? Yes, this is my real resume. You will see that my resume is a lot of pages. A lot of times they will tell you that, number one, you need to have it between one or two pages. If your work is extensive, and it can be more than one or two pages, or three pages. Mine is seven pages long. That's a lot. But the reason why mine is seven pages long is because I've worked in a lot of things. If you specifically worked in television and film only, then you may want to just put the television and film work down there and the rest of the resume you can keep separately. So you can break up your resume to different sections. If you're doing theater or you're doing um, tour work and that's what they necessarily want to see you do, then you can have just those aspects of your resume on there. If you want to show your whole scope of work, which is why my resume is seven pages long, then that's totally okay okay too. So it does not need to be, you know, one page and or less or two pages or so. I made it really, really um, unorganized. So let's go through a few things while I organize my things. Number one, you do not need to have a objective on your resume. We know your objective is you want to work as a makeup artist or you are a makeup artist and you've been a makeup artist, so an objective is not there, hence why I don't have there. You want your name to be big, because I want to know who you are at the top, somewhere, not on the side, not little here, so forth and so on. What you are, makeup artist, your phone number, your email address. Now, you're normally sending this person your email, resume, or through a text message, so they'll have your phone number, but it still needs to be on your resume no matter what. Um, and you also can have on there, if you want, you don't have to have them on there, your social media handles, okay? If your social media handles are a place that you're okay with people going to to see your work. Some people use their social media handles or their social media pages as their actual physical resume or their portfolio. So if you use it as that, then yes, put those on there. Have people go there and use it for that particular thing. If it's just like, you know, a combination of personal and professional photos, then maybe you want to create a um, social media handle or social media profile that is just for your, um, your work. So you want to have that on there. If you have any education or any training that has to do with makeup, then put that on there. If you want to put, you know, your education in general, that's okay to put on there. If you went to college or went to school or got a master's, that's wonderful. I'm not really looking at that when it comes to makeup world, but it's not a bad thing to have on there. I actually have my degree on there. All right. Um, if you won any awards or no have any specialties, like if you have a master's degree in special effects makeup, I do. I put that on there. If you had all this extensive training in different places with different people in different countries, fill in the blanks, put that on there. I want to know that if you have a special skill such as body painting or you're really good at like rhinestone application, put that on there. I would like to know that. You're really great at tattoos to make them look real. Put that on there if you have a class or you've taken it or you know how to do that. That needs to go on your resume. Now let's talk about work. Now, I like to separate it into the specific categories. So you'll see film. You can see I've done a lot of film work. You'll see television. That's on mine. Again, this is an extensive one. So you see television. Then you see commercial work, tours, theater and opera, and some special effects work as well. Okay? In each individual section of work that I have, let's just use film for an example, all right? It needs to be as simple. The name of the project you did, the year that you did it at, what you were. I was a department head. If you were a key, if you were an additional, you can write additional makeup artist or you can just write makeup artist. We got that you were the makeup artist on it. I like to say where it was at, who directed it. And sometimes I write who the person is in, um, who was in the film or not in the film of people that I've actually did the makeup for. So if Tom Cruise was in that movie, but you did not do Tom Cruise's makeup, don't put Tom Cruise's name on it, okay, all right? Just put the people that you've done the actual makeup for. If you decide to put somebody's name on it, I don't recommend that you have to put the person's name on it. It is an extra thing if you feel like you wanna do it or not. 
I do have another suggestion. So I put all my department head stuff together. I also put my key things on there if I was a key makeup artist. Um, I haven't been a key makeup artist that often, but I am one from time to time. And if I'm an additional makeup artist, as you will see on here, it just says makeup artist. Again, I have every range of makeup in my resume. If you want to keep it where you have all your department head stuff together, all of your key makeup artist things together, or all your additional makeup artists together, then you can have that as well. It's up to you. If you've only been a department head, you can have the top of your resume say um, underneath your name, Shannon Renee, department head resume. Okay, And then they know that that resume is complete version of department head. If you've only been a key or you've mostly been a key, again, it could say Shannon Renee at the top of it, key makeup artist resume but the main things are do not have your objective on we don't need an objective have your name really really big as i look over have your name really really big have your phone number and your email address if you have a website or have social social media accounts that you use as your portfolio have them on there and make sure that they are current and new you don't have anything on there that would be you know unprofessional Make sure that it is clear the name of the project that you worked on, what, what you did in that project, whether you were a department head or a key, an additional, what year it was, where it was filmed at. If you want to write the director, that's optional. You don't have to put that there. If you want to write who is um, in the film of people that you actually did makeup for, you can actually do that in there as well. Again, that's optional. But make it as simple as clear. When I'm looking at resumes or resumes are, are sent to me, I'm looking at who is the makeup artist, meaning their name, how can I get in touch with them, how much work has they done, how much work have they done in film, how much work have they done in television, um, and how long ago that work was. Again, you have to start somewhere. So if you only have five things on your resume, you have five things on your resume. Congratulations. If you only have, you know, 50 things on your resume, you have 50 things on your resume. You got two pages worth of things or three pages. Again, if you don't want to have an extensive long resume, you do not have to have an extensive long resume. You can caddy corner that to just briefly put the amount of work that you work for the particular job that you're sending that resume in for. If you want to have a long scope, have a long scope. If you want to just bring in two sections of it, like, okay, I want to show that I was a department head and I was a key, then have that as well. All right. But makeup resumes are super, super, super important. You need to have them. And last thing, update them the minute that you finish that job, okay? Because sometimes you go into the other job and then somebody asks you for a resume five or six jobs later and you're like, oh my God, I forgot what I did. So the minute that you either finish the job or get the job and you're working on the job, go to your resume and write that updated job on it. All right?